In the great state of Montana, game wardens fight a daily battle. They fight to enforce state game laws and protect our natural resources. Today in Region 4, wardens deal with a giant black bear and people running their check station. In Region 5, illegal deer are found in camp. Somewhat of a problem right there. While Region 2 wardens saturate the valley on an all-out poaching assault. Let's see your hands. Get your hands up. It all happens right now. In Region 4, State Game Warden Brett Logan gets his first call of the morning. We just got a call from Dave Holland, the warden out of Augusta. Uh, he had a bear yesterday try and get into somebody's shop by digging underneath the door. Uh, so in that case, we definitely want to remove that bear because of uh, safety issues. He'll come back and just keep working at it until he gets in there. Um, so Dave trapped it, and we're going to meet up with him and help him release it. Uh, we're not going to tranquilize it, put it to sleep, uh, because there's a good chance that it will get uh, harvested within the next couple of days, and the meat won't be any good for anybody to eat for the next 30 days after we tranquilize it. So, Logan meets fellow warden Dave Holland near the Bear Tooth Game Range. He already has the trapped bear. So I'm just going to drive right to. We're releasing the Willow Creek right there at the big flat spot. That works. All right. Follow you up there. Yep. The wardens want to release the problem bear a long way from where he tried to get into the house. They also hope to tag it. We like to, every bear that we catch, we like to put an ear tag in their ear and uh, in case they get in trouble uh, at a later date. But uh, where we can't tranquilize it, we can't uh, put the ear tag in it. So we're just going to have to document what it looks like, how much we think it weighs, if there's any distinguishing marks on it. So. If we catch them again, we can hopefully identify them that way. It's not all bad to not worry about making it a smooth ride for the bear. Yeah. Because they'll think about, oh, okay, I got in trouble, I'm in this trap. I gotta stay away from trouble. At the Willow Creek drainage, the wardens come up with a plan. The cantankerous. Oh yeah, that's a big bear. I think he was going to den in there. I got to looking around. He had like excavated out this big thing in the calving shed. How about this? I'll pull down there. And we'll face him that way. Go run down the draw. Get a perfect world. That'll work. Yeah, in a perfect world. They plan to use a winch to raise the trap gate from a safe distance. Warden Holland's not sure how the bear will react, but this much he knows. They, they are unpredictable. I think you will. We're pretty close. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got it. Hey, this boar isn't happy. So this bear, um, I captured it about 60 miles north of here in Augusta. It looked like he was getting ready to den up in a calving shed on a, on a ranch. So that wouldn't be good because they're going to be using that calving shed in January, February to keep for calving out cows. So that wouldn't have been a good mix. In our experience, you got to get a bear at least 50 miles away from where you catch it or it just finds its way back. So we're about 60 miles south of where I caught it on the Beartooth Game Range in uh, we got about 25,000 acres of public land here, so hopefully he can find a new place to den up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna winch from inside the, uh, the vehicles. So by policy, we're supposed to be inside the vehicle, so I've run my winch cable up and over um, to the gate, get in my vehicle, run the winch from inside. Uh, black bears usually will you know, take off immediately, stop maybe 50, 60 yards away, and look back. Grizzly bears have a tendency of, to turn. Um, they 
they'll attack the trap. They'll get frustrated for being in the trap for so long. So we've had had incidents in the past where bears have come out and actually um, back in the 80s, we had a warden who was injured from a, a bear that came out of a trap, turned around and tried to climb up on the trap with him. They're worried this bear could do the same. This is a, this is a bait door. They, uh, this is an older trap, so they had these bait doors to put the bait in the trap. But bears will do that. They're a pretty strong animal. He was starting to bend this bait door. He did that this morning on the way down. You know, he, it is a wild animal. You know, he may focus on, if you're standing in the back of the pickup truck, he might focus on you. He can turn and be up in the back of the truck within seconds. Exactly why Warden Logan arms himself with self-defense spray. It's uh, a lot easier to hit a, hit a bear with a fog of pepper spray than it is a small bullet. So it's always good to have it handy nearby just in case. Columbus, Montana. Up in Region 5, Warden Paul Lukey keeps an eye on deer hunters. It's the early season and not everyone's supposed to be hunting the woods yet. Well, we're just going to pull down here and see some campers. A lot of times people will, uh, you know, during the big game season, they'll camp for a few days and campers and hunt out of here. This is a little piece of public property. And there's a perfect example, a couple deer hanging up right there. So. We're going to go check some tags and uh, just make sure everything's legal. Fish and game, anybody home? Anybody home? Game warden? Okay, take your time. Are these your deer out here? Okay, I'm going to go look at them, all right? It appears the campers harvested two young bucks. Check some deer at least. Oh, nice little white-tailed deer. We had a youth season the past couple days, so these are likely going to be... Uh, check the licenses. Hopefully their birth dates are fairly young. Almost immediately, the warden spots a problem. So they put a... We don't do... We don't do... Uh, um, does and buck licenses, we do antlered and antlerless, and an antler is considered four inches or less. That one is well, seven, seven and a half inches long right there, so that's somewhat of a problem right there. How are you? A woman tells the warden the men and boys are still out hunting. Were you hunting with them yesterday, or are they on their own um, with, with their dad? or? Okay, yesterday. What's the story on this little buck here? Uh-huh. Okay. Not for a spike, it has to be less than, it has to be four inches or less. And this one is seven and a half inches long. That's a problem, not necessarily a problem to make a big deal out of, but let me check something else. The woman says a 13-year-old harvested the illegally tagged buck. Yeah, I'm just looking in some regs here to just double check that tag number. After a little more research, Lukey decides on a game plan. Oh, you just get your jacket? I know, it just get windy and nasty. Um, there is an issue with that deer. I mean, it has to be less than four inches long and that's seven and a half inches long. So it's, it's a problem, um, but I'm not gonna, do anything about it right now because I know you're not the one necessarily responsible for it. I mean, it was your son who shot it and his dad or whoever was with him. And I'm going to give you my card with my cell phone number on it. Okay. When they get back, I mean, I have to address it. I, I, I'm not usually in the business of, you know, writing kids tickets and doing that type of thing, but, you know, it is technically illegal right now, so it has to be. Um, something will have to be done. I'll decide. No matter what, just tell them not to worry. I'll be fair. Make sure they call me. As soon as they get back, if they don't get me, just leave me a message. Um, and just tell them, you know, don't, I just don't want that going to the processor before I get a chance to talk with them. Oh, okay. okay. 
And the issue is the guy put an antlerless tag on that deer. Antlerless by definition in Montana is a less than four inches measured. That one was seven and a half inches. So it's quite a bit over what they're allowed to, to have. So we'll have to address it later, but they're all still out hunting. And uh, I'm not gonna confiscate that right now. It's likely gonna result in a citation, not necessarily for the kid, but at least for, for the parent, you know, if he's willing to uh, admit that he had the, the kid take the shot at it. Straight ahead. There we got it. Hey, the wardens have their hands full with a problem bear. Poulter Lake, Montana. In Region 4, Wardens Dave Holland and Brett Logan get ready to release a problem bear trapped on a ranch. Although this big boar appears calm, hey, he acts up as wardens prepare for the release. It's uh, a lot easier to hit a, hit a bear with a fog of pepper spray than it is a small bullet. So it's always good to have it handy nearby just in case. They, they are unpredictable. The bear takes a quick sniff and runs. That's a big bear. Bear gone. There's a, he's running out there. Good direction. <laughs> this bear avoids the wardens and heads out into the Bear Tooth Game Range's 25,000 open acres, where the wardens hope he'll stay out of trouble. All right, I'll let you guys go first so you can get a jump on him. All right, well, we'll see you later. Give us a call if you need anything. Yeah, went good. He's going to head off. He's probably going to head down to the lake and get some water and start looking around for some more food, probably. Looked like he was pretty healthy. So he'll probably make the Beartooth his home this year. 150 miles to the southeast. Over in Region 5, Warden Paul Lukey patrols a popular deer hunting area. Out on public land, he spots a hunter. I'll just jump out and talk with this guy real quick just because he's walking down the road. Oh. Now this is the most inefficient method of road hunting I've ever uh, seen. No, it isn't something. <laughs> I'm just packing the, one of the guns back because my son shot a little buck up here. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, good for him. That car, piece of carters that goes out. Like up on the hill, up on this side? Yeah. Okay. Turns out the hunter has a problem. There are too many bucks. Have I, you guys checked it out? It's a <laughs> too many bucks. What? That's Dude, a, the buck to doe ratio is hosed up, man. Huh. That's the we first time I've ever heard anybody complaining about Isn't that. that <laughs> well, the light yesterday, because they were on the, the youth hunt yesterday, way out in that far corner, they got two bucks out of seven. Uh -huh. There were seven over there. Okay. We just saw probably eight or nine more over here. And then over on that hill over there, there's at least one. Okay. You can see. Your last name's not is it? It is. Okay. Yeah. I just talked to your wife. Oh, did you? Yep. And so you have, you have three sons? Yes. Oh, okay. A younger yeah. son. Well, actually, I'm glad I ran into you because we we're just going to go back. We we're talking about going back and meeting with you later. There was a problem with that smaller buck, the the spike buck. The problem being, in order to put an antlerless tag on it, they have to be less than four inches, and that one was seven and a half inches long. I've got a video of it here. We couldn't see. We just saw the one little yeah little yeah. Couldn't see that it was a, it had larger horns. Did you guys measure it or think maybe that it was going to be a little bit too long? <laughs> well, and see that's the thing. I read it, it said four inches, and I wasn't sure if it was both of them had to be four inches or. I'm or pretty sure either. One. So even if it just has one, you know that needs to be four inches. So because sometimes they're all different. I didn't measure that second one. We can go back and measure, but I imagine that one's probably. It's right at 
probably yeah. real quick. I didn't measure it either. Yep. Yeah. Were you with your boy when he shot it? Yeah, so okay. Did you I had to admit it. did you yeah. basically let him I mean, was it your I idea? Told him to put the tag on there. It's to my shoot. fault. Okay. My fault. And the reason why I'm getting at that is too is I <clears throat> I don't like to ruin it for kids and I try very, very hard not to write little kids tickets. So there's really right. never a reason to do it. So anyway, right. fishing game law it just snowballs so bad. Right. So I mean right. technically there's an over limit. There's some illegal possession. There's, you know, t killing two bucks. But I think we can settle it very easily by letting him keep his buck, his bigger buck. Okay. And I can actually, the law would allow me to write you a citation, and I'll write you the smallest citation that I'm okay. legally allowed to do. Okay. And then you just lose that spike, okay. and nobody loses privileges or anything like that. And so for me, it's more of a technicality, but I can't let it go yeah. because it's it's like otherwise people will will just say, well, just shoot it. And if it's longer than four inches, call the game warden. You'll just give us a warning. Yeah. So the hunter agrees to meet the warden back in camp. Yeah, I'm a pretty reasonable guy. I, I still kind of, I'm still kind of thinking there might be some high grain involved in that, and that's just kind of the way you think after doing this for a few years. He was very nice, but the fact that they shot that, that buck first, the little one. They could have just put the A tag on it. It was very obvious to me that it was more than four inches. I mean, four inches was that long, and that thing was that long. So. I don't know, I feel okay about writing them a citation. I think they have one come and they kind of elected not to put that A tag on, their uh, antler, antlered uh, deer tag, which they could have, or they could have called me knowing there's a problem and they kind of decided to to go for it. So uh, they got to take it coming, not the case of century, but you got to do what you got to do. Still ahead. Hunters blow past a state game check station. And wardens give chase. Near Augusta, Montana. In Region 4, state game wardens set up a hunter check station along the Rocky Mountain front. We got a check station up on Highway 200, kind of targeting uh, the traffic going westbound. Hunters legally have to stop at the check station, but wardens know not everyone follows the rules. Well, there's the spotter, the spotter, and he's basically he's the forward observer that that calls out the vehicles that are coming into the check station, um, trying to tell which one should be stopping. They're looking for any kind of probable cause that looks like a sportsman, whether they're in camouflage, orange, they have a dog box, a freezer. Um, if they run the check station and they have that PC, we have chase vehicles on the other side, and then those vehicles, you know, pull them over and, and interview these sportsmen to see if they have been hunting. And if they have, they come back through our, our check station. If not, you know, we, we send them on their way. Sometimes, instead of going past the check station, we'll have what they, we call a short stop. And as soon as they see the signs, immediately they'll pull over. More than likely because they have something illegal in the back they didn't tag or they have the tag in their pocket and they want to put it on. Or, you know, we've had drinking and this is a, a public highway and they're, they're hiding those things from us. Um, they don't know where to stop. You know, it could be as innocent as that, so. It happens at uh, just about every major check station that we run. Somebody will short stop and try and fix whatever they've done before they get to us. Wardens start their check. How are you? Good. Where'd you guys go? Over by Bond. Oh, yeah? Friends over there. How'd your dog do? Oh, he's great. He's starting to get a little blind, a little deaf. Oh. His nose still works. <laughs> These bird hunters harvested pheasants. Wardens check their bird count and their hunting license. Everything checks out. This is this conservation? I'll give that back to you. And then this is just one? Yeah, the other two are back there. Okay, I'll let you put that back in there. And you got two, Wendy? Let's see what the young one looks like. I've never seen him. He's just changing. He's got long, yeah. curly spurs on him. You know yeah. That's an old guy. Difference there. That's the this, bird. this bird's bird. over a year old. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's a good, he's a you good can tell bird. by the weight of the beak. You, you hold the beak, <laughs> and if they break, if their own body oh, okay. breaks it, then it's, over, it, then it's not over a year. If their beak can hold their, their own weight, then it's over a year. Okay, we'll have a good trip back. Thanks, Thanks Thank guys. Drive safe. A black Honda SUV with a 
tumbleweed stuck in the grill. Uh, looks like he might have had a green cooler in the back, but I'm not entirely sure. Spotters keep an eye on traffic. Soon enough, a warden calls in a suspicious looking truck. And 10 4. Seconds later, the truck speeds past Warden Logan. Ten four, we're gonna be on that black truck. Back in Columbus, game warden Paul Lukey meets hunters in camp where he discovered an illegally tagged spike buck. You're back. Yeah. All right. Got you got the, oh, the deer's over there? Okay, well, thanks for taking care of that. I appreciate that. I'll tell you what, I, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get your driver's license and I'll just, I'll just write you out the ticket and basically it's an accountability ticket. Just your driver's license will be fine. All right, well, I appreciate your demeanor and all this. It makes my job easier. The warden decides to avoid a confrontation around the young hunters. Just like we explained, I'm just gonna do exactly what I said I was gonna do. Solicitation, which is command, encourage, facilitate, that just allows me to write somebody else because your boy is not really responsible for it. That wouldn't be fair to him. Encourage or command 13 year old son to wit violate 876201, which is the actual violation of putting out one of those whitetail license on Buck Whitetail. Bonds 135. We talked about what happens to the deer. Any other questions? Um, I will say I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Like I said, luckily we have yes. what they call discretion, so we don't have to write every single ticket that yeah. there is. We save those for the people that really, truly deserve them, you know. And exactly. So, anyway. After writing a ticket, the warden confiscates the deer and moves on to the next call. Later, the Montana game wardens take down poachers. Let's see your hands. Get your hands up. Get them up. Today's state game wardens Brett Logan and Dave Holland captured a nuisance bear. They've relocated it to the Beartooth game range. The release went off without a hitch. In Region 5, Warden Paul Lukey has stumbled onto an illegal deer hanging from the meat pole in a camp near Columbus. Seven and a half inches long right there, so that's somewhat of a problem right there. And now in Montana's Region 4, State game wardens check hunters at a mandatory game check along Montana's Highway 200. Warden Brett Logan watches a truck blow by the checkpoint and gives chase. Ten four, we're gonna be on that black truck. How are you guys doing today? There we go. Not too bad. Brett Logan and Game Warden. No. Uh, we were just doing a check station here and saw you had a camel shirt. Have you guys been hunting at all? Yeah, we were hunting. We were you? Don't have any birds. Don't have anything? No. Okay, do you know the laws about stopping at check stations? No. Okay, when it, whether you have anything or not, you still need to stop. Um, you need license? Yeah, if you got your guys' license handy, what I'll have you do though is if you could pull off a little bit farther, if you wouldn't mind me checking through the back of the truck just real quick. Have been hunting. They just said they don't have anything, so we'll check their licenses real quick and look through the back of the truck just to make sure, so. Where were you guys hunting at? These bird hunters tell the warden they didn't know they needed to stop since they have no birds in the truck. The warden checks the truck and their licenses. You don't have any birds, nothing in the cooler? Nothing for fear. Okay, um, nothing in the toolbox, no birds or any game to show. Okay, so what's gonna happen is a written warning today for passing the check station. So let me punch that out real quick and we'll get you guys on your way, okay? Thanks, guys. In Montana, all hunters must stop at check stations. Warden Logan takes care of the paperwork. All right. Like I said, this is just a written warning. Uh, just saying that you failed to stop at a check station after hunting, so. Uh, in Montana, on your way to and from hunting, even if you don't get anything, just swing in and say, we don't have anything. We might still check the back of the truck or the coolers or something, but show us your licenses and we'll get you on the way, so. All right, thanks guys, Thank have a good day. Oh, you're fine.
The black truck with the Missoula plates, uh, they were hunting. I just got them a CC, they'll be leaving. A little bit of education. A lot of people uh, don't, uh, don't understand that uh, even if you haven't been hunting on your way to and from, if you pass the check station, you still need to stop and uh, uh, let us know you haven't got anything. Uh, if you have coolers, uh, open up the coolers and just, just make sure so we keep everybody honest and on the same page. Just south of the check station, Warden Joe Kambick sets up a second crew on a nighttime patrol. Have you um, been having some spotlighting calls yeah. coming in? My hand owner who you're on told me that there's been a lot of traffic and that's what they've been looking to do is shoot something easy. Yeah. Whoever's on the other end, they're always spotlighting activity there and it's always with a big bunch of elk to come down about an hour after dark. I'm gonna take one group down by Warm Springs and set up there, set you guys up there. Bart's gonna take the other one that's just right on the other side of town here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go grab my decoy and Terry and I and Bart will zing up dry cotton. Okay. There's been probably 200 elk that have just been sitting right there on the side of the road. Okay. The team plans to split up and set multiple decoys in a problem area. The wardens want to catch the hunters who have been shining deer and elk and poaching them after dark. Well, the plan is, is uh, we've got three different groups of game wardens out. We've got teams of three. Uh, we're all going to be running decoys all on separate ends of this valley. And then uh, about nine o'clock, we're going to put a plane in the air and the plane is going to cruise back and forth through the valley looking for spotlights. We're going to have game wardens on every end of this valley creeping around here. So the bears and the wolves aren't the scary things out. It's going to be us tonight. Right at sunset, team one sets up their decoy. I think they're going to be moving pretty quick through here too. Oh uh, yeah, it's going to have to come way down here. What do you think? This is not the easiest fence to get across. The wardens need to get tucked away before anyone sees them. We're gonna be down here somewhere. We'll just hunker down. We're gonna have to be down because they're gonna be shooting right above us. Across the valley, Cambic's crew focuses on elk hunters. I wish you could move a, a real elk like that, that easy. Jimmy, it's a big old bull. We're gonna get down in here. We gotta go hide trucks first. The warden stashed their trucks a quarter mile down the road and the lights go dark. Just minutes later. Coming down if you don't see it. Got it. The warden spot headlights. In Montana's Region 4, state game wardens set up a mandatory check station. All hunters must stop for inspection. Good morning, guys. Just going to the check station today, checking all the license and all whatnot, seeing if you have any game. Uh, all I have through. is a white tail buck that I shot with my bow about a week and a half ago. It's in the back here? Yeah, just the head tag on. Gotcha, if you don't mind uh, shutting off the vehicle real quick and hopping out and showing us. Yeah, no Perfect. Problem. This hunter says he shot a buck using his bow. South of Cascade is where I was at yesterday. Gotcha. 
but didn't get anything. I got this, I've been out all last week. Yeah. Uh, elk hunting over in the same area, and I shot this white tail buck. And where'd you get him up at? I got 445, same area I was antelope hunting in. All right. And archery elk hunting last week. Yeah, it's always a fun battle to try to get it out there without destroying it, huh? This hunter's harvest checks out. Suddenly, Warden's watch as a second vehicle stops short of the checkpoint. Uh, we might have a short stop. Back on the nighttime patrol, Wardens watch a potential poacher shine in their elk decoy. Right as the truck stops. Warden's remote control decoy stops working. The driver seems to be leery and moves along. He was just looking straight into the woods. I think if I could have got that head to turn, it would have been a good deal. I'm gonna go check it out and see what the problem is. Too bad we couldn't make our elk go. <laughs> Give him the Opal Gangnam style. <laughs> Let me turn him on. He's a little slow. While the wardens troubleshoot their broken decoy, Team One spots another truck. It appears the driver spotted their bug decoy. Two eight two seven. What the heck's this car doing? Wait, I think they're coming pictures of it. It looks like the driver decided to stop and take a picture. <laughs> how are we doing? Good, how are you? Good. Just a decoy. Yeah, I was just looking at it. Oh, okay. We'll have you probably move on now, okay? okay. Thanks for not shooting it. Sorry, yep. With teams continuing their ground search, they also look to a higher power. Up in a spotter plane, another warden watches for spotlighters. Suddenly, the flight team spots a light. Warden Kambik makes a spur of the moment call and has a decoy team get into position ahead of the suspicious truck. I copy. Um, we are almost in position. If he starts coming back to the south, let us know. Kambik thinks the eye in the sky might be watching a poacher. We may just be able to pull this off. The team sets up and wires their decoy in complete darkness. This is good. This is good stuff, Terry. They're on the road we came up and there's no reason for them to go up this way. It appears that they're probably up to no good. Seconds later, the team spots the truck. Fishing game! Stop your truck! Get your On foot, the wardens can't stop the driver. He races away, not knowing a second security team has him pegged.
Let's see your hands. Get your hands up. Get them up. In Montana's Region 4, wardens stop vehicles at a mandatory game check station. Uh, we might have a short stop. Back at the checkpoint, Warden Brett Logan watches a truck stop short. Often that signals someone who might be trying to dodge the law. How are you guys today? Well, we just uh, run in a check station down here and we saw you turn in and have the dog box. We were wondering if you were a hunter or something. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, are you? Good. Okay. Sometimes when people do that, it means they're throwing birds in the ditch or oh, throwing yeah. tags on stuff. So we wanted to come and check, see what was check going on. station. It wasn't marked. Though. Sure. It is down the hill, but we didn't. We got a spotter truck up the road. We didn't know if maybe you'd seen him. And Yeah, a spotter truck, absolutely. Threw, I just didn't know what you guys sure, were doing. Sure, sure. Do you have any birds or anything with you? We don't. We don't uh, shot one hun. And we, uh, we got probably four pheasants, and, and I got that hunt. Are you just taking a nap? Is that what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, I was, oh, I was okay. pull over at Bowman's and just kind of missed the corner, and so I said, I got, I got a snooze. Sure, I got gotcha. you. Driving into the sunlight. Yeah, I don't blame you. Getting warm, you had a long hunting trip. Dog's all taking a nap. Do you mind if we sneak a peek through your cooler real quick? No, go ahead. Thanks. The warden checks out the truck for anything suspicious. Logan also makes sure the man's story adds up and checks his hunting license. After a quick peek, this hunter appears to be following the law. Cool. All right, man, thanks. Yeah, we'll, we'll be a little bit, probably 15 or 20 minutes. Well, in, you know, since I checked it here, don't even worry about stopping. Right on. Take a nap. Right <laughs> thanks. He was taking a nap, had a long weekend of hunting, and didn't have any birds. He ate them all, so no violations. With sunset coming, the wardens wrap up the stop after discovering only a couple of problems. All in all, it went well. Um, got a few citations, a few written warnings. Thanks, guys. Yep. See you tomorrow. Nice. Right. Wind's hosting tomorrow. Put, put in there, <laughs> <laughs> Over in the Deer Lodge Valley, a nighttime poaching sting takes a serious turn after wardens spot a truck nearing their decoy. And the driver flees as wardens close in. Let's see your hands. Get your hands up. Get them up. So what are we out doing tonight? Uh, we're just taking a little booze cruise. A little booze cruise? Doing a little drinking? Yeah. yeah. A little shooting? Okay. All right. What kind of weapon do you have in there? I have a 300 Weatherby and then this pistol that I shot. Okay. You shot that with a pistol? I didn't. Who did? The fellow in the back seat. How did he do that from the back seat? Coming out the window. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, these guys watched it, so they're going to be able to tell me. So you're telling me you didn't do it? Okay. I want you to stand right in front of your vehicle right here. Who is the shooter? The driver. The driver says that a rider in the back seat pulled the trigger, but wardens know this story doesn't add up. You were the shooter? I'll take the blame for it. No, I don't want to take the blame. I want to know who the shooter was. I don't see how he could have hung out over all these girls and, and, and by you. You see what I'm saying? I don't, want, I don't want to lie. I just want to get in trouble for this. OK, well, if you want to lie, that's how you're going to get yourself in big trouble. But if you want to be honest, then we'll, we'll deal with it that way. So you shot the gun right off the driver's side window. That handgun right there. Okay. The shooter faces serious fish and game violations. And now wardens think this case could quickly become very serious. How much have you had to drink tonight? Five, six beers. Five, six beers. Are you okay to drive? Yeah, We're going to find that out, aren't we? Deer Lodge, Montana. State game wardens have their hands full on a late night poaching sting. Warden stopped this man after he shot their remote controlled decoy with a handgun. Now they suspect he might be drunk. Have you killed anything yet this year? Yeah, I killed a deer. Buck or a doe? So you thought you'd get yourself a second one? 
is being stupid, sir. Okay. Well, I like your honesty. Wardens discover beer and alcohol in the truck, and the warden smells alcohol on the driver. Do you your conservation and elk license in here? Uh, I think it's con con conservation. Is so you know what you did wrong here? Yes, I know. We have a real problem with spotlight out here. And I, as you can see, we take it pretty seriously. Well, let's see what this is. Uh, I don't need that. All I need is right here, man. All right, why don't you come back over here again? Get a step away from the truck. Done anything like this before? I have never. Done. Never poached a deer out of the spotlight or anything like that? Got any warrants out for your arrest? Okay, because I'm going to check. Okay. Wardens call the sheriff to assist with the drinking charge. While they wait for him to arrive, wardens address the shooting charge. 204 FG 210. Can I get a 29 when you're ready to copy? County's coming out anyway. They asked if I wanted to come out, and I said, "Well, yeah, you might as well. We can. He can deal with all the, uh, the miners, in miners in possession, and if he's 1061 or whatever." Okay. All right. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and cite you for shooting that deer in the headlights. Okay. I'm going to um, write that up, and then uh, as soon as I'm done with that, we're going to have a little chat, and uh, I hope you learned a lesson. Ever going to happen again? Okay. I knew right when I shot it, it was stupid. Yeah, I didn't see it moving. I'm like, yeah, they're coming. <laughs> so you were you were gonna run from us, right? You were you were just gonna pull just, up here and wait. Yeah, I you couldn't have gone far, right? I've seen. Oh, it's a decoy. They're gonna right. come out of nowhere. In a second. All right. Well, hang tough for me, man. I'm gonna be right with you. Just finish this paperwork up. What's she doing? She's got a pee. Oh. <laughs> the local deputy arrives. How are you doing this evening? Not too bad. Real good. Good. A field sobriety test reveals the man's had way too much to drink. I'm going to talk to the board in here and see, and see if he's done with you. And then we'll go from there. All right? Hang tight. What do you got? It's a definite 60. OK. So you're going to take him in? Yeah. OK, I'll just give him his citations before you do that then. Yeah. Tonight, he's going to jail for drunk driving. The wardens add several misdemeanor charges. Here's your driver's license back. Your uh, license is, hunting license is back. These are citations for shooting that deer, OK? This is a mandatory appearance. You got to go see the judge on or before the ninth day of November. This citation here is attempt to take simulated wildlife, shooting that white-tailed deer with the, with the use of light during a closed season, because after it's dark, it's closed season, OK? And that's that one. You already shot a deer this year. This was the attempt to take a second one, and it's the same information. Also, uh, a, an appearance to go in and, and see the judge. Any questions? All righty. I hope to not ever have to have this conversation with you again. OK. I appreciate it. All right. Well, better luck, OK? Make better decisions. And tell your friends we don't like spotlighting out here, OK? Turns out this man comes from a family with a long history of run-ins with wardens. Yeah, that's a big poaching family, Terry said. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, team. That was some excellent, excellent work. It was a bad night for him. But that was a good night for the wildlife, though. Because if that was a real deer, it would have died, or at least had a bullet in it.